<laughs> so we're going to go ahead and start out with a bang. I want to talk about the Justin Bieber, uh, that whole video and everything like that. And then also a clip from Gene Deal. And remember, a lot of y'all came for me because I said, well, Gene, if you were there, why didn't you stop what happened? Remember, he said Usher had to end up going to the hospital, but he didn't want to say why. And then also Usher said, yeah, I wouldn't send my kids over to Diddy House. So we're going to go ahead and start it out. Let me change the background for those of you where it's too hard to look at that. I don't want to give nobody seizures. I know the screen is kind of harsh when it blink like that. Here we go, you guys. 18, you get the house. You get the mansion. Okay, I get yeah. the mansion. Yeah. So where, where are we off to now? Where would you like to go? Um, I mean, wherever you want to go. Where, where are we going? <laughs> we just, so check this out, yo. Um, Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, like, like the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose. But um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. He signed to Usher. I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, 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 and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Crazy. I'm taking this out tonight. What you want to do? What you want to do over the next 48 hours? 48 hours. Let's go. Um, are we gonna? Let's just go get some girls. Let's go get some girls. Man, after my heart. That's what I'm talking about. Puff was had Kim in the room. Had one of Keith Sweat's baby mothers in the in in the uh the big room outside the master bedroom. He came outside in his robe. He came outside in his robe. She gave him a fellatio right there. His back was turned to me. She gave him a fellatio. You knocked on the door. I came and opened the door for you. Puff went in the room. You came in the room and kissed that girl dead in the mouth. Now I'm telling that because you take enough of somebody that you know and a lot of more people know didn't do you right. When you was at Diddy Camp. Y'all put it together. And what you mean by Diddy Camp? Remember? He was on um, one of the talk shows. The white guy with the curly hair. What's his name? Um, the white guy with the curly hair. And he said, yo, would you send your son to Diddy Camp? And Usher said, no, no. Ask him why he won't send him to Diddy Camp. But yet and still, you praise him. Damn, man, and you said that, I know you can't go into detail, but you said that um, it was a situation where Diddy sent him to the hospital? Let Usher explain that to you. Let Usher mama explain that to you. And the hospital was in Scarsdale, New York. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> That's all we need to know right there. Well, that's just a hell no. Mind you, he uh, Justin Bieber was his protege. So you sent your protege over to Diddy House, and you were cool and fine with that, but you ain't going to send your own kids, which, I trust me, I don't blame you for not sending your own kids over there, but you ain't going to just send your protege over there to Diddy's house. That whole interaction, let's talk about the first video. That whole interaction between Diddy and uh, Justin Bieber Something was off. Justin Bieber seemed very nervous, and Diddy was just, uh, the chemistry was off. There was no chemistry. Now, I don't know if that was the beginning of them hanging out or towards, you know, the following day when they already had hung out, but knowing that that, um, now, I did look it up. That wasn't the house that Diddy, you know, has now, the one that was raided, but just knowing that Diddy has been doing this for years, it doesn't matter which house Diddy in. Diddy is going to have some kind of freak party wherever, you know, he lives. It don't matter. This does not matter about, oh, it be in this, part of this house or that house. Diddy is going to be Diddy and he's going to do whatever he wants to. But anyway, you know, just he, him trying to be around Justin Bieber and trying to show him around and have a good time. Mind you, you were in your 40s at the time you took that. Like, what are you doing hanging out with a 16-year-old? 
or a 15. He didn't even ha have his driver license. He was 15 because he said, oh, I got to wait until next year. But you're literally hanging out with a 15 year old and you're in your 40s. That's weird. Now, some people will say, oh, well, you know, they just shot that video for, you know, fun. It wasn't anything to ta be taken seriously. Nah. Because if that video was just for fun, they would have said something. Because mind you, we've been talking about it heavy since last year, but it's been a thing. And that video is still up on Justin Bieber's YouTube channel. That's not something they're trying to hide, something that they're trying to take down. It's still up. Like, it was cool. Now knowing that there's a probe into the whole trafficking thing, I mean, there's no other way to look at it, right? There's a probe. Now, we know he paid for services, right? I'm trying to be monetized, but I might not be. But we know he paid for services from escorts and stuff like that. We know that about Diddy, right? But if they're looking into trafficking, that means that you had people against their will. And who knows what the age ranges were? That means something was going on there. And if Usher specifically said he wouldn't have his kids there, but he let Justin Bieber go there, oh yeah, that's a problem. That is a problem. So we move on to Gene Deal, where you know he said he had his back turned and one of the girls was giving uh, Diddy fellatio, and then uh, Usher knocked on the door, came in the room, and then kissed the girl in the mouth. Now, a lot of people are all like, oh, Gene, you know, he was just saying that he was there. He didn't know exactly what was going on. Well, Gene has a lot of details, and I'm all like, Gene, if you were there, why didn't you try to stop this from happening? Why didn't you take Usher out that situation or call his mom and be like, hey, there's some stuff going on. I don't think, you know, he should be around this. But you were there. Mind you, Gene comes from law enforcement. Before he was a security guard, I believe he was like a PO or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, you guys. And shout out to everybody coming in the room. Make sure y'all hit the like button and all that good stuff. But he, I, he, was, he was in law enforcement, so I'll just say that. Gene was in law enforcement, so this is something that we know about already, right? So with that being said, you didn't have it within you to uh, report something that was going on or something that was illegal because Usher was only 14 when he was hanging around Diddy. So a 14-year-old in that situation, he shouldn't have been in that situation at all. Not at all. But Gene, you know, is saying something now, and I guess it's kind of like we appreciate you speaking up now, but if you didn't do anything in that time period of when it was going down, then I don't know how much of a hero you are. This is me being honest, you guys. I mean, how, how often do we hear these stories where somebody's exposing the industry and they're all like, oh yeah, I was there and... I was so shook and all this other stuff, right? But then it's all like, well, damn, if you've seen all that going down, you didn't say nothing? You just let that happen? You didn't go like, whoa, wait, hold on. Something is wrong with this picture. Let me go ahead and um, say something, try to put a stop to it. Like, you just let it happen? Because that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that you just let it happen, and now you have a story to tell after the fact. And then especially when he said in that clip, you guys, I, Usher and his mom know what happened. Have the, I'm paraphrasing. Have them tell you. Have Usher and his mom tell you what happened. And he was in Scarsdale or something like that. I am Case. Let me read your comment. Um, all of these YouTube cloud chasers from the 90s are like that. Yeah. It's like a thing. And again, I'm not saying that his stories are lies or they're not true. I'm just all like, well, damn, you didn't do nothing? You just let it happen? That's a 14-year-old. Now, granted, if it's an adult, even then, I mean, you should step in. But if it's an adult and adults are doing whatever they're doing, I can see, you know, you turning a blind eye. 
but a child, somebody innocent, and you're letting that go down in your presence. And then you hovering over this whole hospital story and was like, oh, let Esther tell you. Well, you might as well just tell us. We already know Esther is not speaking. Now, should Usher speak up? Yes, he definitely should. The way that he protects Diddy, it doesn't make any sense to me. He definitely should speak up now. However, I'm just saying, y'all, Gene Dill, he's not a hero to me. I don't hate him or nothing, but for me, he's not a hero. What about you guys? Do you feel like Gene Dill is speaking too late? Or is it the right time? I don't know. But those of you just coming in the room, make sure y'all hit that like button. I'm going to go ahead and play the video again for you guys just coming in. 18, you get the house. You get the mansion. Okay, yeah. get the mansion. Yeah. So where, where, where are we off to now? Where would you like to go? Um, I mean, wherever you want to go. Where, where are we going? Okay. We just, so check this out, yo. Um, Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, like, like the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but, um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. He signed to Usher. I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when, you know, he, he did his first album. I did Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, and, and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Crazy. I'm taking this out tonight. What you want to do? What you want to do over the next 48 hours? 48 hours. Let's go. Um, are we gonna? Let's just go get some girls. Let's go and get some girls. A man after my heart. That's what I'm talking about. Puff was had Kim in the room. Had one of Keith Sweat's baby mothers in the in in the uh the big room outside the master bedroom. He came outside in his robe. He came outside in his robe. She gave him a fellatio right there. His back was turned to me. She gave him a fellatio. You knocked on the door. I came and opened the door for you. Puff went in the room. You came in the room and kissed that girl dead in the mouth. Now I'm telling that because you take enough of somebody that you know and a lot of more people know didn't do you right. When you was at Diddy Camp. Y'all put it together. And what you mean by Diddy Camp? Remember? He was on um, one of the talk shows. The white guy with the curly hair. What's his name? Um, the white guy with the curly hair. And he said, yo, would you send your son to Diddy Camp? And I just said, no, no. Ask him why he won't send him to Diddy Camp. But yet and still, you praise him. Damn, man. And you said that, I know you can't go into detail, but you said that um, it was a situation where Diddy sent him to the hospital? Let Usher explain that to you. Let Usher mama explain that to you. And the hospital was in Scarsdale, New York. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> The hell no tells you everything. And just going back to the Justin Bieber video where he was all like, oh, let's go get some girls. What kind of girls would y'all have in y'all same age range? Like, alarming. Now that we know that Diddy had Usher around grown women and having grown women doing things to Usher, now thinking about, well, what Justin Bieber could be seeing or done or we don't know. But doesn't make me feel comfortable at all. It doesn't. Right. Right. Well, in Usher's case, because Howard Stern will strike your video, I couldn't play the whole thing. He was all like, basically, my mom didn't know. My mom did not know what was going on. Remember, the story with Usher is that L.A. Reid wanted to put him through Diddy Camp or whatever and help him out, or Puffy at the time, put him through this uh, boot camp and, you know, help him swag him out and stuff like that. Mind you, this is a 14-year-old hanging out with a grown man. Now, Diddy was probably in his 20s at this time, but still, 
That's a huge age difference. And now knowing what Gene Dill tell us, you know, you kissing the girl in the mouth after he done got head and all that, like, it ain't right. It ain't right. And why was he in the hospital? That's why I was like, Gene, come on now. You just can't put something like that out there and then just leave us like hanging like, what happened? You said he went to the hospital in Scarsdale and let Usher or his mom tell you. Usher ain't going to say nothing. You think that's what it was, Kanji? Well, let me move over to uh, something else. Now, uh, Torre, you know, he's a, a reporter. Uh, what's up, Ms. Jones? He's a reporter, and um, he works for BET, MTV, and stuff like that. He told a story about his cousin, who is a male, right? And then uh, Tanika Ray uh, had stitched that video together, right? And then she told her experience, well, not her experience, but told why she hasn't said anything yet about the whole Diddy thing. So I'm going to go ahead and play you part of the video that I posted from earlier today. Here we go. Family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And uh, then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. Years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And absolutely not. And the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. You know, we all have stories. Seriously, we all have stories. Mine is horrific, and only five people know it. And I probably will never tell it. But it's, since then, I've been like, yep. And I also am very intimately aware that you tell your truth and you become victimized over and over and over and over and over and over. And mind you, I then interviewed him many times. <laughs> There's, I have a lot of stories, y'all. I've been in Hollywood for 25 years, maybe longer, 30. I got a lot of stories. Unfortunately, um, maybe I'll write a book one day. But it just is so traumatizing that women just want to live every day and feel safe. And when we revisit and revisit, we live in a state of victimhood and nobody wants to live there. So for those who are like, why didn't you say something then? Because we just want to live. We want to be happy. And we really want to forget the trauma. So there's that. I want to go ahead and read what Tanika actually put underneath her video. She writes, Oh yeah, women hold a lot in order to function every day in a man's world. Unfortunately, we can compartmentalize out pain and carry on. We utilize the experience as a lesson and move differently. If I told my story in 1996, then what? I just knew to avoid him at all costs. Yes, I danced for him and kept my space. I was on the vote or die airplane and kept my space. I interviewed him for his projects and kept my space. Nothing that is happening is surprising. Ladies, keep space to heal and move on is a key. Gathering to incriminate is goals. But in this world, with a broke-ass system, our healing is priority. Shame on all those men. Let this continue. Shame on me, maybe, for prioritizing my mental health, some would say. But after working in a place that snatches souls, mine is intact and of the light. I saved myself. Now, if someone needs me to pile on my story, give me a call. But I think Cassie got it. Whew. Um, uh, so I did not know about that. I'll definitely research that later. And, um, New York, yes, just want to live. I think she said something so important with that, that just want to live. Because a lot of times you're like, oh, well, why you come forward now? You waited all this time, all these years. And anybody who has been victimized themselves know that, yeah, it's hard for you to come forward. It's hard for you to tell your story because as soon as you do, you have to relive it and you got to tell it over so many different times. And so with Tanika, she was all like, yeah, I, I'd rather just have my mental. I'd rather just save all that and just put it aside. And in her, in her writing, in her caption that she put, she said, I interviewed him, kept my space. I danced for him, kept my space. Um, you know, she's been around him a whole multiple times and she has always kept her space. So it's all like, yeah, I'm going to just do my job and move on from it and separate myself from him. And that has to be, I can't imagine. You know, have you ever been at a work spot? And for me being a man, I probably shouldn't talk on this, but 
I would say not necessarily uncomfortable because of, you know, uh, sexual or anything like that, but um, maybe like an energy or a vibe, or maybe you don't like somebody and you still have to work with them. We've all been in those situations, right? Uh, what's up, Nelly? Yeah, we've all been in those situations, right? However, I don't know how it would be if this man was so powerful it could blackball you from the industry or destroy your career. You know, it's a whole different story. Right, Libra love? It's a whole different story in this way where literally she probably wouldn't be working in the entertainment industry. She said for about 25, 30 years or something like that, she's been working in the entertainment industry. She probably wouldn't be if she told her story came out in 1996. Yeah, that was the height of, you know, West Coast versus East Coast and everything like that. She definitely couldn't come out and tell her story then. And I see why she has it, because you got to relive this. You got to say it over and over and over again. And at this point, even with her just saying this little stuff without her giving details, she's going to be known as the Diddy victim for the rest of her life. No matter what she does, she's going to be known as the Diddy victim. Oh, yeah, you're the girl that, you know, was with Diddy back in. And so nobody wants that moniker over their name. Shout out to Dee Barnes. Dee Barnes had, like, what a, she was the first uh, black female to have a hip-hop show. Um, I forgot what the show was named, but after the incident with Dr. Dre, where Dr. Dre beat her, Oh, we're we going to do a Dr. Dre video. Don't worry. Um, after he beat her, her life was never the same again. And everybody says she got like this huge settlement, but then come to find out it wasn't a big settlement at all. Basically, he was supposed to help her with her career. And the lady ended up homeless. She was on Wendy Williams. Yeah, we're we going to talk about all that. But basically, even though she was the victim, she literally got beat to death. Her career went nowhere, and now we got beats by Dre, and he sold that for how how many million billions? I mean, how many billions did he sell it for? So it's crazy the way things work out, where the people at the top are literally shitting on everybody else at the bottom, and they get away with everything. This is why I don't feel bad for Diddy at all, you know. Right, and some people want, yeah, exactly. Mm hmm And I want to say this, too. So going back to Torre, what he was saying. And again, I know it's salacious because, oh, it's a, a male intern that he had, his cousin intern for Diddy or whatever. But the fact that he had to quit because Diddy wanted him to spend the night with him or sleep over speaks volumes. Because if I'm just your intern... Why am I staying with you? No, after, you know, I put in my time, I go home. I'm not staying with you or spending the night. That is crazy. And he said his cousin didn't want to tell him what happened. It just ended abruptly. So that lets you know everything you need to know about this situation. He was all like, oh, yeah, I got to get the hell up out of there. And didn't tell him until years later what actually happened. And so Tere already know, known these, this whole time that, yeah, Diddy is a freak. Nobody like going over his house because Diddy is literally one of the worst. I was going to compare him to a few people, but I think that would be going too far, and they'll definitely tag my video on that. Yeah, and these are the kind of people that get rewarded. These are the kind of people that get a, a star on the Hollywood Boulevard, you know, going back to Libra comment. These are the people that get praised and looked at as um, gods or deities or something like that. It's all like, these aren't people that we should be praising. Why are we praising these kind of people? And again, for those of you just coming in the room, I'm going to go ahead and play the video that we just spoke on right now. Family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And then uh, the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. Years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, 
uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And absolutely not. And the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. You know, we all have stories. Seriously, we all have stories. Mine is horrific, and only five people know it. And I probably will never tell it. But it's, since then, I've been like, yep. And I also am very intimately aware that you tell your truth and you become victimized over and over and over and over and over and over. And mind you, I then interviewed him many times. <laughs> There's, I have a lot of stories, y'all. I've been in Hollywood for 25 years, maybe longer, 30. I got a lot of stories. Unfortunately, um, maybe I'll write a book one day. But it just is so traumatizing that women just want to live every day and feel safe. And when we revisit and revisit, we live in a state of victimhood. And nobody wants to live there. So for those of you who are like, why didn't you say something then? Because we just want to live. We want to be happy. And we really want to forget the trauma. So there's that. I want to go ahead and read what Tanika actually put underneath her video. She writes... Oh yeah, women hold a lot in order to function every day in a man's world. Unfortunately, we can compartmentalize out pain and carry on. We utilize the experience as a lesson and move differently. If I told my story in 1996, then what? I just knew to avoid him at all costs. Yes, I danced for him and kept my space. I was on the voter die airplane and kept my space. I interviewed him for his projects and kept my space. Nothing that is happening is surprising. Ladies, keep space to heal and move on is a key. Gathering to incriminate is goals. But in this world, with a broke-ass system, our healing is priority. Shame on all those men, let this continue. Shame on me, maybe, for prioritizing my mental health, some would say. But after working in a place that snatches souls, mine is intact, and of the light, I save myself. Now, if someone needs me to pile on my story, give me a call. But I think Cassie got it. So I want to say, when she said that somebody needs me to pile on my story... I think she's talking about the feds. I don't know, y'all. Like, when she, I just caught that when she said that. I think she is talking about the feds. Like, if the feds need me to tell you what happened with me, I'll go ahead and tell you guys. Go ahead and call me. I just realized that. And shout out Miss Bugs, Mary D. Shout out to all my members. I see D. I see Stacy. Yeah, I just realized what that meant. Now, if somebody needs me, that's the last little bit that she said. If somebody needs me, you know, but I think Cassie got it. So basically, yeah, I seen some shit. Some shit went down. If the FBI ever need me, go ahead and call me and you can definitely. <laughs> that's some shit right there. So if you have something that will definitely incriminate him, that means this lady really has a story about him. Um, let me go ahead and read your comment. Uh, the reason why Dr. Dre, and I had told a story about Dr. Dre, for those of you just coming in the room, uh, wasn't ripped off when he sold uh, his Beats headphones to Apple is because he partnered with the white man, Jimmy Iveen. Yeah, Jimmy Iveen, yes. Uh-huh. Oh, the rabbit got the, yep, got the G-U-N, definitely. Yeah, she's telling her truth. Yeah, and I think it speaks volumes because